What's up, my friend? Welcome back to another video. And today I just wanted to share with you an in-depth review of Cinematic Studio Strings. So I'm making this video because CSS is one of those libraries that I use on a very regular basis in my mockups. It's a, it's a workhorse library. It's trusted, tried and true, and it's a simple library as well. And I can't understate or overstate that enough. It's, it's really powerful as well. Um, so before we really dive into the full review, I just want to give you my sample library buyer's guide in case you don't have it yet. Just think of it as a buyer's manual for all the libraries you would need for orchestral production. So I cover things like strings, winds, breaths, percussion, but also like piano libraries, jazz libraries, ethic libraries, the other ones as well that you might want to consider. And CSS is of course at the very top of the strings list there. So I've also included the prices, the utility for the libraries. It's a really in-depth guide. So if you want to grab it for free, it's the first link in the box below and you can download it as my gift to you for checking out this review today. And I hope you enjoy it. So without further ado, let's kind of dive on in. You can see CSS Cinematic Studio Strings is available for $399 or $400. And usually if you wait until Black Friday, they do a discount. Usually it's, I think it's around 20 to 30% and you can get the library for even cheaper. But considering, you know, the price in comparison to other libraries, other string libraries on the market, it is quite fair in my opinion. Then you have the demos, you get a little bit of uh, text and copy about the library itself, realistic and expressive, um, featuring great legato, live sound, and it's fully mixed as well. So you get a mixed mic position and it works for the free contact player. So you don't even need to pay for the full version of contact to use this library, which is always a big plus. Then they tell us about all the different articulations. You can see they're pretty, pretty well covered for all the standard articulations you would need. If you want like extensive aleatoric things though, like on uncommon string articulations, you're not going to find that here then some tutorials and stuff about it as well. And then some frequently asked questions, okay? So that being said, let's kind of dive into the library itself. Here is what it looks like in the contact window. We have the first, second violins, uh, violas, cellos, and basses. They're alphabetical as you can see, and a full ensemble and light ensemble patch. Then they also have some classic legato patches. And this is the updated version of the library, by the way. They updated it, I think it was last year at the time of this recording, with even better legato, better sound, better scripting, etc. So you're getting um, a, a really good library out of the box here. And but you know you can see it's a pretty simple patch structure as well. Like some libraries uh, overwhelm you with tons and tons of patches, and for me, I just turn them off and I just got to kind of get overwhelmed myself. So if I if I see a simple patch listing, then I'm I'm more than more than likely to use the library. So here's the GUI. By default, it loads uh, with sustain and legato activated. You can always turn it on and off. And you can also activate a, 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 a Consordino emulation, right? So with mutes, um, that, that's just a little EQ thing that they can do there. And then you can choose low latency, so it responds faster to your playing, or an expressive, which goes with the full legato transitions, but it, there's a little bit more delay. And then here you can see the mic positions. I just tend to use the mixed mic position most of the time, and you can add some external reverb if you want to do that as well. Uh, with that being said, let me just play some of some of the library here, the legato, and let's have a listen through the different articulations, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so here's the legato in the violins one. All right. So 
there is the legato and i turned on the concertino for the second half there it's a little thinner you can hear that simulation of the of the uh, of the mutes and yeah i was using the low latency mode which still sounds pretty good like the the legato is very uh, capable of keeping up with your playing there and the expressive again has a little bit more delay but it allows the engine a bit more time to incorporate those full legato transitions as well uh, okay, let's kind of move on to the other articulations here. So then we have tremolo, and again, that's just tugging the bow back and forth, and there's a script to legato for all the, these long articulations as well. And of course, you can turn off the legato to get polyphonic. Let's go with the trills. The way the trills work is you have to play the two notes, either a minor second or a major second at the same time, and then it will just alternate between those two notes. Uh, let's skip the mercato and the staccato for now. I'm gonna play the harmonics really quickly here. Let's turn on the script legato. Then let's move on to the measure tremolos. This is actually one of my favorite patches uh, because you can get a really nice chugging sound like taka 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 taka, kind of like that. Especially if you sync it to the host, then it looks at the BPM you're currently playing. In my case, it's 88, and it's going to play in that speed. Right, so I started playing a little bit fast, but I had to slow down because the measure tremolo was playing a little slower. But let's say I don't want to take it to the host and I want my to choose my own tempo. So let's see what 180 sounds like. Pretty cool, right? And then of course you can turn on Concertino for that as well. And you get that as well. So yeah, usually in most of my projects though, I will sync to host because uh, it's just a lot easier than having to set it manually to that my DAW tempo. Um, so yeah, sync to host is a really cool feature that you can use there. We have pizzicato as well. And what's really cool here is that you can uh, use the mod wheel to rotate between different types of this type of short, right? So at the very bottom of the mod wheel, uh, we have pizzicato. controlled by velocity, of course, in terms of the, the, the dynamics of those pizzicatos. Bartok snap is in the middle of the mod wheel. Then we have Colino at the very top. All right. So I think it's a pretty cool idea and pretty unique as well to map the different types of shorts to the one patch, to the one... Uh, articulation, as you can see here. They also do the same for the staccato. This is why I wanted to leave it because it's a little bit more complicated. So when you're programming in your short notes, you can go from spiccato, which is the shortest one they have, to staccatissimo, to staccato, and then finally sforzando at the very top. So let's start with spiccato and go all the way up to sforzando. <laughs> Right, so obviously uh, shortest to longest. And just make sure that when you're programming in your shorts, you have to ride the module before you actually start playing the notes. So your DAW has time to register where the module position is. And then don't be afraid to go in post recording and then actually massage that module data out, the modulation, so it hits the right uh, values basically to trigger the right type of short that you're looking for. Same goes for the pizzicato. Now the Mercado patch is something pretty special as well. By default, it loads with a legato and the spiccato overlay. 
So what this is, is basically a legato patch with a spiccato at the beginning of each note, meaning that you can play runs with this patch really easily. It's not a, a dedicated mercado patch where you play the note and then it just cuts off after maybe a, a couple seconds because a mercado is a marked short note, right? This is more of a tact sustain and that you can play legato with as well, creating some pretty convincing runs. So let's give it a shot. Right? Really, really cool. Because yeah, you can play almost like staccato notes and you get the spiccato overlay because again, every single note that you play has a spiccato at the beginning of it. But then when you play legato, those notes, uh, the, the legato transition, sorry, transitions are really short and it allows you to play in a really fast way, but you still hear all the notes blending together, um, creating a pretty realistic run. So uh, that's what I, I really like. Now, in terms of the other mic positions, I really don't touch them very much. So the mix is kind of a dedicated mix of these different positions. Um, I just like it the way it is. But of course, you can also add more reverb to increase the depth of the hall sound there. So when the reverb's all the way down, it's a lot closer. Actually, you don't hear too much of the room hall at all. So I tend to actually add in my own external reverb. I use Valhalla Room. I use East West Spaces too, um, to add, kind of add in the, the depth of the hall around it, and then also bring out the tail just a little bit more. All right, let's move on to the second violins here. And the, by the way, once now that we've talked about the functionality overall, it's the exact same for the rest of the section. So I'll just go through maybe the legato and a couple of other articulations for the rest of uh, of this library here. So here we go. Second violin's legato. All right, so there in the second half of my playing, I turned on the expressive mode for the legato and it definitely has a bit more delay, but I also heard the legato transitions taking a bit more of their time to really get the full transition out there, which is really cool. And something I didn't notice before or mentioned before is that the mod wheel goes all the way down to silence, niente. So at the very bottom of the mod wheel, the sound disappears completely. Um, that it is something to be aware of. If you want to play really quiet sustains, you can't push the mod wheel, the modulation all the way down or else the sound would just cut off. So I think if you stay at around like maybe five to 10 in terms of your mod wheel value, then you'll you'll be able to hear the, the voices starting from there. Okay, let's move on to the violas. Maybe let's hear, yeah, let's start with the legato here first. Here we go.
Okay, so there we we play through the micro uh, sorry microphone positions as well. Spot one is a bit more dry to the left. Spot two a bit to the right. The main and the room are pretty similar. Main is a little bit drier. So of course you can create your own custom mixes there. But again, for me, ninety nine percent of the time I'll go with the uh, the the dedicated mix mic position just because it sounds good out of the box. And because it's on the drier side, and I I typically like a slightly wetter sound, I'll add my own reverb to it, like I already mentioned. Okay, let's hear some cellos. Here we go. Okay, and finally the bases. All right, so the bases especially, you can tell how much frequency space they take up. They, they have a lot of room tone, um, a lot of mud actually, right? There's, there's a bit of an overwhelming cloud of darkness kind of in the lower frequencies there. So you definitely want to EQ out the low end. That's very, very important. Over the course of a full arrangement, if you stack more and more instruments with low end in there, um, it, it can very easily muddy up your entire mix. So make sure you EQ out the low end there. But also the, the library in general compared to some other ones has a darker, more more subdued sort of tone to it. Even though the performances are very passionate, the overall sound signature is on the darker side. So you do have to kind of EQ um, the high frequencies a little bit higher. So they, they shine a little bit more. There's a bit more clarity there, a bit more detail, and they can serve your, your mixes better like that. Especially when like combining with, with brighter libraries in general, um, I think it's always a good idea to do a little bit of EQ with the library. Um, let's just finally go through these ensemble patches. We have the light ensemble, so it only gives us sustains, staccatos, and pizzicatos. All right, and then the full ensemble patches have um, all the different articulations. And uh, by the way, the mic positions here are basically the the balances of the different sections. So instead of like main mics, spot mics, mix mics, you have violins one, violins two, violas, cellos, and basses. So if we turn off the basses, then you're not going to hear them at all, all the way at the very bottom there. All right, I solo the patch first, right? If I turn it up, now we can hear it a bit more. So just keep that in mind. And then of course, this is basically just a full patch with all the different patches or all the different instruments in there, okay? Maybe let's hear the spiccato one a little bit.
there we go. So you get all the necessary articulations you would need in most cases. Again, this doesn't have a bunch of uncommon articulations like uh, glisses and um, like screeches and clusters and stuff like that you might need in other situations like uh, thrillers or horrors and stuff, but you do get the basics. And for me, like 99% of the music that I write uses some some of these articulations, if not most of them, right? Uh, so yeah, that's the idea. And maybe to show you in context, I want to show um, one of my pieces, Love's Rapture, with you. This is a piece that uh, is exclusively legato, basically. It's very sustained, and I really wanted it to be led by strings in the ensemble. So I want to show you CSS in context in that piece, and I'll show you uh, my maybe some tips and tricks on how to get the best out of the library in that context as well. So let's jump on over to that. All right, so here in my piece, Love's Rapture, it's a very legato inspired piece, right? There's there's not very many shorts or anything like that. I wanted the lines to be really flowing and CSS really excels in the romantic legato style. Uh, and many people regard CSS as having like the best legato in the industry, even though it's relatively old in terms of, um, in terms of age. But let's have, just have a listen to this A section when the, all the instruments come in here. And we'll look at the MIDI as well. Oops. All right, so the main key to achieving a smooth sound is literally overlapping the notes to make sure the legato transitions are activating. So every single note I'm playing, you, you can see that the the note is is extending beyond the attack of the of the subsequent note. So the notes are overlapping, which means the legato transition between those two notes can then activate. Now, in addition to that, the modulation is also very important, right? So talking about the dynamic layers, making sure I'm following the phrase. Uh, going up when the notes are going up to go a little bit more passionate when the notes are going down you're probably ending the phrase so then you can come down and activate those dynamic layers as well so I, I i like personally as a pianist i prefer to play in my lines because i get the most natural and musical results by doing that but a lot of people can uh, get really good results as well by clicking in all the notes you know if you're not a pianist you probably do this and then you you draw in the modulation separately to uh, to achieve those dynamic layers and that expression. That, that's totally fine as well. But for me, I like to take advantage of, of my keyboard. I, I, I like to use it. So that's just my personal preference there. But you can kind of see how programming is just so, so important in context, um, making sure that you, you overlap the notes for legato, making sure that you, you write the modulation to activate those dynamic layers. And no matter what you're programming, making sure that that is set in stone correctly first. So you can't really go wrong with CSS because it really is a full-fledged string library that has all the core articulations and functionality that you really need. It is an industry standard for a reason and I really do enjoy it. So I can highly recommend it. Again, if you don't have my full sample library buyer's guide yet though, I would highly recommend you check it out just because it contains all my personal preferences. And this one is kind of at the top of the list. I use it all day, every day on my mockups and I really enjoy it because of its expression. It's uh, it's rubato, sorry, it's vibrato and it's dynamic layers. It just sounds so smooth and so good. So uh, definitely check out that sample library buyer's guide in the description box below. Uh, it's totally free again and I want you to have it as a gift for checking out this video today. So thank you so very much. I appreciate it. I'll catch you in another video very, very soon. And I hope you enjoyed this review. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.